So did you know that you can upload and play videos in Roblox? And I don't just mean slide presentations, I mean actual video files that are going to play sound in your Roblox game. And I'm basically just going to show you everything you need in this video. So as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel and let's just get to it. But first I'm going to go over the video frame and the requirements of uploading a video. The first one basically meaning that a user needs to be 13 plus and ID verified. And if it comes to the video itself, you of course need to have the legal rights to use the video asset, which just means that you cannot upload somebody else's video, or it's probably going to be taken down. Then it adheres to the Roblox's community standards and terms of use, so probably no swearing or suggestive content, and it needs to be 30 seconds or less in either the MP4 or MOV format with the resolution equal to 4K or less. And it also needs to wait less than 375 megabytes. And there are also only these languages that are supported, like English, Spanish, Portuguese and so on, with the audio and text. And my guess is because of Roblox's moderation, only recognizing the audio formats in these languages. And something really important is that the video ignores alpha channels, meaning that if you have transparent parts in your video, they are probably just going to be displayed as black. And you of course have a 2000 robux fee whenever you upload a video, so this tutorial is going to be kind of expensive for me. But anyway, you can also upload only 3 videos a month, or rather with a 30 day period, which just starts from the first date of your first video upload. And the rest of this documentation is telling you how you can upload a player video, which I'm basically just going to cover right now. So let's just go into Roblox Studio, which as usual needs to update. And we are here. So now we have a question of how do I make a video on Roblox? And it's going to be as simple as using any of Roblox's GUI tools. Like for example a screen GUI, or a different example would be a surface GUI as well. Where I'm just going to add one into the part that I just created. And then into the surface GUI, I'm going to add an instance called a video frame. And you can see that it's right here, but it's a little bit too small. So I'm going to make the part bigger and then change the size of the video frame to be as big as the part, which I'm just going to set to 10 by 10, meaning that it's going to be scaled on the part size. And another thing which you have to keep in mind is the fact that the video might have a different resolution. So depending on it, you might have to change the size of the part to be the same as the video's aspect ratio, but for this tutorial I'm just going to be using 16x9, since the video that I'm going to upload is going to be in full HD resolution. But before I actually spend the 2000 Robux on this video, I can also show you a different method of getting them. And it's as simple as just going into the toolbox, onto the creator store, and then just selecting videos. And then just in case there is going to be something weird in, well, the community assets, I'm just going to go to the filters and only search for videos uploaded by Roblox, like this. And maybe just copy the asset ID of the clock passing time video. So I'm just going to right click on it and select copy asset ID, which I'm just going to paste into the video frame, which I created previously, where I will need to put it under the video property that's right here on the bottom. So I'm just going to paste it in like this. And here you can see that we have the video. And if you were to have a different aspect ratio, there is a possibility that your video could basically just look like this. Or maybe even that. So just make sure that the part is going to have the same aspect ratio as the video. But right now if I do a playtest, it's not really going to play. And this is because the video doesn't have the playing property enabled. Where if I were to change it right now, you can see that it's actually going to play. And then you're just going to stop like this, that's because we didn't set it to looping either. Where if I were to enable both of these properties, now it's just going to be playing continuously. So I'm actually just going to do the same, except not at runtime. So now with these two properties selected every time I do a playtest, it should be playing automatically. So yeah. But I also mentioned something at the beginning about the video playing sounds. And I don't really know if any of the videos provided by Roblox have an audio track, so I'm just going to do some editing magic and maybe for example find one. Okay, and I just found a video with sound which I'm basically just going to do a playtest for. And it's this one right here. So yeah, if I move a bit further away, you can hear that the audio is going to be playing from the video instance. And since this is a 3D world, as you can hear it's going to be also directional. So yeah, and right now we have the basics covered. So let's go to the part where I actually publish my own video. Huh? And bro, just can I just get a break? It's like this on every weekend, bro. <laughs>
I'm gonna cry. And okay, half an hour later and I already forgot where I was in this video. But I think this is the video upload segment, so yeah. Now to cover that part, it's as simple as just going to the asset manager and selecting the bulk... I'm... bro... Going back for the 20th time, you just have to select the bulk import and then navigate to your mp4 or mov file, which I'm just going to do right now. And for some reason the option isn't even here, so give me a minute again. And it just turns out that something might be a little bit wrong in the documentation here. So what you want to do is go to the creator dashboard. And after you press on this link, it's going to take you straight to the creations page, where you are going to have an option to upload a video, which I'm just going to do. And here you have all of the previous informations, but I'm just going to press on upload. And I just took a snippet from my previous tutorial on the stylized trees, where I'm just going to say that this is a snippet of a video tutorial in Roblox Studio. And then I'm going to hit the most expensive upload button of 2000 Robux. Are you sure you want to continue uploading? I'm pretty certain I don't, but anyway. I swear, if I just pay 2000 Robux to get my account moderated for no reason, I'm going to cry. And it brought me back to this page, but I'm not really able to see the video. So I'm just going to check my inventory in studio. Okay, and it's right here. So I'm just going to press on the copy asset ID and try replacing the video property. And well, it's right here, so I'm just going to do a playtest. And why you should be using a sphere? Because this model right here, it used a sphere as the vertex But this guy is pretty boring. this one used a cube. And if I just pull them together, Could even watch you can see videos. that the shading is way different. And the same goes for this tree in comparison with this one. And why you should be using a sphere. But well, anyways, right here we have a video of me doing a Roblox Studio tutorial in Roblox Studio itself. So yeah, I also wanted to show you how to modify different properties and use different events through scripting and do different stuff like for example adding a UI drag detector since this is again a GUI instance which is basically just going to allow me to drag it like this and I could even be adding like a border and basically do all of the different stuff that I would be able to do with all of the other UI elements but yeah again since I kind of ran out of time here is a quick preview of the video frame documentation which covers all of the different stuff like the 2D and 3D sound playing the audio through scripting where you will need to wait for it to load since the script might run before, the video itself is actually going to be loaded. And same goes for all of the different properties like is looped playing, resolution, time length and stuff from GUI objects. But what's also really important are the events, like a did loop event, ended event, the video loaded, paused and played. But anyway, this is basically going to be every first day. So again, go check out my Patreon page and as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. And thanks everyone for watching, hope you had a nice day and see ya guys.